This video is going to be a quick review of significant figures. The first thing that you need to be able to do is determine how many significant figures are in a number. So for example, let's say if we have the number 846. How many significant figures are there? Every non-zero number is a significant figure. So there's three significant figures in this number. Another example, 3546 has four significant figures. Now let's say if we have a zero in between two non-zero numbers. Is that zero significant? All zeros between two non-zero numbers will be significant. So 704 has three significant figures. 5006 has four significant figures. Now what about zeros to the right of a non-zero number, like 500? How many significant figures are there in this number? It all depends on if there's a decimal point or not. If we do not have a decimal point, the zeros to the right, which are called trailing zeros, are not significant. So this would be only one significant figure. In this case, the trailing zeros are significant. So this would be three significant figures. Likewise, if we had 500.0, this would be four significant figures. Now, what about the zeros to the left of a number, like this 0 0.075? Are these zeros, the leading zeros, are they significant? Leading zeros are never significant. So there's only two significant figures, the 7 and the 5. So let's say if we had 0 0.00836, only these three numbers will be significant. So to review, let's try this example. 0 0.00508.30. How many significant figures are in this number? So looking at the leading zeros, remember the leading zeros are not significant. The zeros that are in between two non-zero numbers, those are significant. And the trailing zeros are only significant if there is a decimal point, which we do have. So therefore, these five digits are significant. So we're going to have five significant figures. So what I'm going to do at this point is give you a quiz. And I want you to determine how many significant figures are in the following numbers. So the first one is going to be 4250, and the second one is 7080, and then 30,050 with a decimal point, and then 0 0.00703. Next we have 0 0.08060 and then 5030.0 and finally 750.064080 go ahead and determine the number of significant figures in each of those numbers by the way for those of you who want harder examples or maybe just more examples I have another video on YouTube that is about an hour and a half long but it really goes deep into this topic so for those of you who want to master the concept of sig figs, you can check out uh, that video. I'm going to post the link in the description section of this video, so feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Also, if you're going to subscribe to this channel, uh, make sure to click the notification bell if you want to receive any updates of any new videos that I'm going to post in the future. So let's go ahead and begin. So 4,250, how many significant figures does it have? So the zero at the right, do we count it? Well, it's a trailing zero, and there is no decimal point, so we're not going to count it. So therefore, we can only count these three non-zero numbers. So we have three significant figures in the first example. Now, what about the second example? How many significant figures are there? Well, once again, we don't have a decimal point, 
so we cannot count that zero. But what about the zeros in between non-zero numbers? So those zeros we can count. So therefore, this answer, I mean this problem, also have uh, three significant figures. Now for the next one, there is a decimal point. So the trailing zero is counted, and all of the zeros in between the 3 and 5 are also counted. So this example is going to have five significant figures. For the next one, we do have a decimal point, but there are no trailing zeros. We do have some leading zeros, but those will not be counted. So only these three digits will be counted. So there's three significant figures in uh, that number. For the next one, we do have a trailing zero, which will be counted. The leading zeros will not be counted. So there's only four significant figures. Now, in the next number, 5,030, we have a decimal point, so all of the trailing zeros will be counted, and the zero between the 3 and 5, that's always counted, so we have a total of five significant figures. For the last example, all of the zeros in between the non-zero numbers are counted, and since we have a decimal point, the zero to the right is also counted. So everything is counted in this example. So there's, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have nine significant figures for that problem. Now the next thing that you need to be able to do is you need to be able to round a number when multiplying or dividing. So for instance, let's say if we're multiplying 4.6 by 3.52. How can we round our answer with the appropriate number of significant figures? Well, the first thing we need to do is perform the calculation. So 4.6 times 3.52, if you type that into your scientific device, your calculator will give you 16.192. Now, how should we round this answer to the appropriate number of significant figures? What would you say? What we need to do first is we need to determine the least number of significant figures in the first two numbers that we've multiplied already. So in the first number, 4.6, there's two significant figures. In the second number, 3.52, there's three significant figures. So when you're multiplying or dividing, you need to round your final answer to the least number of significant figures in the original numbers that you use to multiply to get your final answer. So basically, we need to round this answer to two sig figs. So writing it from left to right, we have the first digit, which is a 1, and then the second one is a 6. Now already, this is two significant figures. So the last number that we need to look at is the 6. Should we keep it at 6, or should we round it up to 7? And so we need to look at the next number. If it's 5 or more, then we need to round the 6 to a 7. If it's 4 or less, then we're going to round down. We're going to keep the 6. And because it's 4 or less, it's 1, we're going to round down. So our answer is 16, rounded to the appropriate number of sig figs. Now let's work on some other examples. Let's multiply 5.64 by 3.64 or rather, let's choose a higher number, by 12.458. And let's divide 96.752 by 3.541. Go ahead and try those two examples. Round your answer to the appropriate number of significant figures. So first, let's type this in the calculator. So 5.64 times 12.458. So the calculator gives us 70.26312. Now the first number has three significant figures. And the second number has five significant figures. So we have to round our answer 
to the least number of significant figures. So that's 3. So how can we round 70.26312 to 3 significant figures? So we're going to need the first number, the second one, and the third one. Should we keep it a 2 or should we round it up to a 3? Looking at the next number to the right of the 2, it definitely falls in the category of five or more. So that tells us that we need to round up. We need to round a two to a three. So the answer for this example is 70.3. And it has three significant figures. This answer has a total of seven significant figures. Now let's try the next example. So let's begin by dividing 96.752 by 3.541. And so you should get 27.32335498. Now the first number has five significant figures. And the second number has four. So like always, when multiplying or dividing, you need to round your final answer to the least number of significant figures, in this case, 4. So looking at the fourth digit, or the fourth significant figure, starting from the left, should we keep it at a 2, or should we round it up to a 3? So looking at the next number, it falls in the category of 4 or less. So we're going to keep the 2. So our final answer is 27.32. Now let's talk about addition and subtraction, but mostly addition. So let's say if we wish to add 2.36 plus 12.1, how can we round our answer to the appropriate number of significant figures? So if we add these two numbers, this will give us 14.46. But what should we do here? For this type of problem, it's better to write the problem like this. Now, you need to round your final answer to the least number of digits to the right of the decimal point. So what I like to do is draw a line. Because for 12.1, there is no number to the right of the 1. And so we're not going to have any number to the right of this line. But now, if we add the two numbers, it's going to give us 14.46. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this significant figure, but we need to determine if it should stay a 4 or if we should round it up to a 5. Looking at this number, it's greater than 5, so we need to round this number up. So our answer is going to be 14.5. And that's how you're supposed to do it when adding or subtracting. Let's try another example. 4.328 plus 13 plus 5.45. So go ahead and try that problem. Well, first we need to add. So we have an 8, 2 plus 5 is 7, 3 plus 4 is 7, and then 4 plus 3 plus 5 is 12 carry over the 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So we get 22.778. Now what should we do next? How can we round it? So what we need to do now is determine which number has the least number of digits to the right of the decimal point. And so that's the second number. So we're going to draw the line here because it has nothing on the right side of that line. So therefore, our final answer should only contain these two digits. But we're going to use the 7 to determine what we need to do to the 2. Should we keep it a 2 or round it up to a 3? Well, 7 is more than 5, so we're going to round the 2 up to a 3. So our answer is going to be 23. And that's basically it for this video. So once again, if you want more problems on significant figures, 
check the link in the description section of this video for the other video where it's it goes into more detail on this topic. Thanks again for watching.